Hey you, how's it going? Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. My name's Casey Marie and today I'm going to be doing a video all about loop pedals and loopers and stuff and things and how to blim and well use them because you may well have just got yourself a new loop pedal or you've had one kicking around for a little bit and you just don't know where to start. Well, hopefully this video is going to help you. What I will be covering in this particular video is the different layers and the different elements that I usually incorporate when I'm looping stuff and they generally tend to be drums, percussion, bass, chords and sometimes like a little melody thing but we'll talk about that a little bit later. As seems to be the format with YouTube videos because I spend an awful lot of time on YouTube uh, people do a little introduction about their video and they're like hey man smash that subscribe button I don't quite know why you have to smash it that sounds awfully violent to me but whatever but if you could subscribe to the channel I would really really appreciate it I'm going to be doing a whole lot of videos about all sorts of really cool stuff which I'm sure you shall enjoy. Anyways hey I've got the chapters listed below for the video so if you want to fast forward to a particular section you can but I thought a really good place to start is just tell you the gear that I'm using today. Nice and simple. So starting off, so this is Tara. She is my Takamini TAN16C. She and I have been together for a really long time. She's an amazing guitar. Sounds great for doing this sort of stuff actually, which you will hear in due course. All right, so going down to my pedals. Very, very simplistic setup, as you can see. I've got my Digitech Jam Man Solo, which is the loop pedal that I'm going to be using today. Uh, pretty much just a, you know, start, stop, record, that kind of thing. Nice and easy. I, I use this pedal if I've got a gig where I'm, you know, literally doing like a 45 minute or an hour set or something like that. It's nice and easy. During the pandemic, I did treat myself to an Electro Harmonics 45,000. Oh, it is so good. It's so much fun. And I am full sure going to be doing a video on that. So stay tuned. Alrighty. So next up is the LR Bags Venue DI. I've had this pedal for such a long time. It goes on pretty much every gig with me, <laughs> uh, both bass and acoustic gigs. And it's great because you've got obviously the, all the EQ options. They're a little bit on the dirty side. I see. I do need to give that a bit of a clean, don't I? But what else? All right. And then finally, the first pedal that I've got here, I've got a Boss Octave pedal, which I've had for, again, a really, really long time. I've had this since I was like 20 years old, which was cough, cough years ago, one or two years ago, you know. Okay, so let's dive on into some drums and percussion. Generally speaking, the drums are the first thing that I layer, but not always. Sometimes I put the bass down first and then the drums, or sometimes I put the chords down first. Anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. So, so the way that I play the drums has kind of evolved and changed a little bit over the years, but I'll show you guys how I used to do it and then I'll show you how I do it now. But again, just feel free to experiment. So I used to do my kick drum sound like this. All right. And then I have some friends of mine that kind of do the snare sound here on the side of the, the guitar, like that, which I can't. Clearly, I can't do. Nowadays, I tend to do my kick drum sound by putting my hand flat and just hitting the strings in the sound hole kind of area to get that kind of a sound. And the reason this is a little bit easier for me is because my snare drum sound is my thumb, which I just hit this section of guitar right here. Okay, so let me show you just a real simple beat. Uh, Right. So that's the general idea with the kick and the snare. Also, when you're doing a drum pattern like this, remember to use your left hand to kind of mute the strings. And I'm just putting my fingers very lightly over the strings. Don't feel like you have to do it in one go. If it's easier for you, like I'm a drummer, so it's easier for me to kind of do the, the percussive stuff. But if it's easy for you to like layer the, the drums first, don't feel like you have to do it all in one go. It's a loop pedal. Once it's looping, who gives a sh So you could always do the kick first and then layer the snare or whatever. Um, so let me just show you how that would sound within the loop, all right? Once I've figured out my drum pattern, I then like to put percussion stuff over the top. And this is where you can really experiment with the instrument itself. Also, if you're playing electric guitar, don't worry, there are some really cool percussive stuff you can do, which I'll show you in a little bit, I promise, all right? So when you're doing percussion, it took me a little while to kind of figure out where the, the different sounds were on Tara, you know, she's got all sorts of different sounds. So it's like if I hit her here, 
that's a sound, you know, if I hit it here, that sounds different, you know. Everywhere sounds different. So it's kind of finding where those sounds are and getting used to them in my mind. Uh, there was a gig where I used to like turn Tara over and play like the back of it here, you know. You know, I don't know, get creative. Don't be afraid to just like experiment, try stuff out. Generally when I'm doing, I've got two different percussion things that I do. One is where I kind of, I use my arm to mute the strings on the guitar and then I kind of tap here. And then my other hand is on the top of the guitar here. All right, so I kind of do like this sort of, just as an example. That sort of thing, let me pull this up a bit. And the reason that I do that is because I like the two different textures rather than just playing in the same place. But again, if you like that, play in the same blooming place, that's all right. So remember when you when you're layering percussion parts, right? So percussion generally goes in between where the drums would be. So the bass is going to be syncing up with the actual drum beat, and we want the percussion to be in between those sections, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here's. that gives you a general idea. That's percussion. So let's talk a little bit about bass. Okay, so when I'm layering bass parts, another thing to consider and think about is when you are creating these loops, if, so if, there's a song that I do live where I start off with the drums and then I add the chords and then I do some soloing over the top of it. But what I have to remember, and I've done this many times, so this is the voice of experience talking, right? Make sure that instead of just doing like one bar of drums, so in your mind, if you're thinking, oh, well, the drum loop repeats the same thing over and over again, right? Well, if you're planning on adding chords, just remember to leave enough space so that if, if the sequence is like four bars, just remember to like loop four bars, just a little side note there. And with the bass, uh, there's two trails of thought with this. So if you want to get the loop going nice and quick, if you're playing live and you want to get the loop going really quickly, um, so just as an example, uh, So that would be something that, that's the same thing looped over and over again. What I like to do is actually loop a bass line around a few times, which it's twice as long, obviously, when you're, when you're looping it and you kind of feel like people are just staring at you. But I can add in these variations that I really like to include. Uh, rather than just having the same thing going round over and over again. Because if you're going to be using a pattern for a long time, sometimes it's nice to have that variation for people that are listening. So what I mean by that is, you know, instead of going like... So instead of just doing that, you could maybe do like... Um... something like that. Let's try it in a loop and see see what it sounds like. So first of all, let's layer the drums. stuff and this will be relevant if you're playing electric guitar and you don't have the luxury of like a giant acoustic guitar to get all your percussive sounds um, so another thing that you can do is just like a muted kind of strum on the guitar which does also sound really cool so something like this so let me just show you how that would sound in a loop
right, so let's talk about some chords and adding in some, some melodic stuff into this. So we've got our drums, we've got percussion, we've got bass. And something that I like to do when I am actually layering chords is to record like one inversion of a chord and then actually play another inversion of it. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if you take A minor, for example. So what I like to do is maybe record this inversion of A minor, but play up here. All right. So let me just layer another loop. So let me do drums and bass, and then I'll, I'll put in some melodic stuff. Okay. So we've got like a kind of a, a, a loopy loop going. What I like to do is have like the main loop going with that melodic stuff included and then go between playing a second inversion of a chord and then maybe playing some, uh, some solos and stuff. Let me show you what I mean. Felt there. Anyways, another thing to think about is maybe creating like a melodic line that actually pedals throughout the entirety of your song. And it's another thing that you can think about when you're going on your, your looping journey trying to figure out stuff and things that you can do. And there was a song I used to play ages ago. Let's see if I can remember it. And I, I had like a part that kind of pedaled throughout the song. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can remember it. <laughs> Crikey, try saying that when you've had a few. Melodic element that you can, you can have a think about. When you're creating your loops is to maybe do stuff like have a strumming part on the loop and then finger pick and kind of do, because there's so many really cool melodic things that you can do when you're finger picking over a strum pattern. It doesn't even have to be something very fancy. It can sound really cool, just very simplistic chords. And what I love working over is like G's, like a G, C add nine, D, E minor, uh, th th that combination of chords, there's so many things that you can do. And I'll, I'll stick a capo on the guitar just so that I've got access to these kind of chords. And let me show you what I mean. <laughs> Mister, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'm very, very happy to help. And I'm super excited about you going on your looping journey. I promise you, it's, you're going to have so much fun. Just don't be afraid to just dive in and just experiment and try stuff, all right? If you like this video, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate it. And if you have not done already, smash that subscribe button or caress the subscribe button or whatever. Uh, if you could just subscribe to my channel, that would be great. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you again soon. Take care. See ya.